Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Tonina, for that wonderful introduction. I wonder if I deserve all of that. Um, thank you for inviting me to speak. It's really an honor to be here. I also feel that I'm speaking perhaps to converted. So here we are. The introduction of CDC is a model of service delivery designed to give more choice and flexibility to consumers. Consumers, I don't like the term either. It was first piloted in 2010-2011. From the 1st of July 2015, all home care packages required to be delivered on a CDC basis, and the Commonwealth Support Program is to, ac to be accessed through My Age Care from July 1st, 2018. In principle, the aims of CDC are to offer consumers more choice and flexibility, support to access relevant information and make informed decisions on the care that is best for them. A partnership approach and better quality participation, wellness and reablement, and a greater transparency. The CDC philosophy and promise of achieving individual control, choice, flexibility, and independence in old age is viewed by many older people as potentially liberating, and it is alluring. It certainly is for me. Look, I'm an old age person. <laughs> it has enabled age people to overcome fear of the future. That's very important. Whether the CDC, however, the promises can be fulfilled is another matter. The community expectations arise, but are unlikely to be fulfilled for those who need care, and particularly for the vulnerable age with double or multiple jeopardies. The philosophical principles that underpin CDC are person-centered approach and consumerism. Person-centered approach is a holistic approach to personal care and is rooted in a virtue ethics with the ultimate aim for the person to achieve evdemonia, as we say in Greek, or flourishing, to thrive, or be in a peak position, condition. This goes back to Aristotle. On the other hand, consumerism is based on the concept of autonomy with the original origins in the ideal of liberty, going back to Stuart Mill. Consumerism defined in terms of advocacy of the rights and interests of consumers and its preoccupation with the acquisition of material goods. We are, we are well dealing with how, what we are dealing here with, however. Care, that is a value. Health, that is a value. And choice, that is a value. Yet the CDC reforms have commodified these values as if they are material goods that can be bought sold and regulated according to market forces, overlooking that the consumers, in this case, frail aged whose choices are at stake, are left to fend for themselves with the help of the market. The CDC philosophy assumes that the age healthcare system can be accessed and navigated by all frail aged people and through a single point of entry, is unburdened from ageism and other discriminatory views. Choice and control will be easily achieved in virtue of the CDC reforms. It assumes that it's adequately, adequately resourced, assumes that the standards and guidelines developed will be achieved by non-health professionals and unregulated workforce, by the way, which are excellent, the guidelines and the standards will, through competitive market forces, ensure plentiful supply of providers who can be easily accessed no matter where you live and no matter how small or new an ethnic group may be, will be comprised of providers who have the integrity and are trustworthy, honest, professionally and culturally competent and safe, and whose practice is accountable and transparent. Let me share with you some of the research to date. Research in US and UK and Australia indicates that older people support CDC. And a majority of 70% of seniors in Australia rated choice and empowerment as extremely important to them. Also, older people in US and UK who had received CDC reported to be satisfied with it. 
However, the same 70% of seniors in Australia who thought that the choice of empowerment is extremely important had very low confidence in the system. Further research indicates that demand as stripping supply in terms of both quantity, amount of support needed and quality, type and appropriateness. Already we all know that it's about 100,000 people waiting in the national queue at the moment. Difficulties in finding and choosing a provider to suit their needs, being unsure and lacking confidence to change existing, provi to change existing providers and navigate transitions let alone manage their own package. Too vulnerable to drive this market change. The Brotherhood of St. Lawrence and other researchers also found that aged people research had no access to internet, which you already heard that, had no computer, were not IT literate, and thus unable to access information via email, websites such as My Age Care, Senderlink, My Government, they also believe that even if they are IT trained, they ask them, they thought that they wouldn't be able to have the skills. In addition, the Brotherhood of St. Lawrence noted that providers previously used to be able to, to transfer funds from uh, certain areas to reallocate it to age with higher needs, the standards needs, and when asked half of, and, and now they cannot do that to provide uh, certain services that they can't provide now. And when asked the isolated age in that particular group who attended social isolation inclusion programs said would not continue to attend those classes because of the limited budgets. They also have found out that lack of insufficient choice or no service provision, increased administration costs, significant need for advocacy and coaching services, Providers, coordination and advocacy was not resourced. Considerable reduction of available case management hours, irrespective of whether the client wanted to be involved or not. Less capacity building, support and monitoring available to clients and carers. Less information provided face to face, increasingly provided by booklets, which a lot of the um, older people could not follow. Increased changes of care, uh, Increased reliance on carers to monitor and coordinate their care. Minimal or no monitoring of direct care workers, case managers or care coordinators. Increased exposure to risk, abuse and neglect. neglect abuse and neglect disappearing from you and are now normalized. Difficult to dismiss or performance manage direct care workers. Age people decline to keep them happy. So only old people who are well educated or have in support of capable carers are able to take advantage of CDC. Consider the possible multiple jeopardies facing older people in a multicultural and diverse society. Older people who do not speak, read or write English and who have no direct language to communicate deeply personal needs, feelings and experiences or to ask for help have diverse cultural backgrounds, have low or no education, are technologically and health illiterate, have no supportive networks, isolated elderly, indigenous people, live in an abusive situation, are cognitively impaired, are homeless, mentally ill, blind or, or deaf, live in a rural and a remote areas, small ethnic groups with undeveloped organizations, have only pensions to live on. By the way, if you get a package number one, you also have to pay every fortnight $144.68 from your pension as well. The pensioners have to do that. Meanwhile, you have to pay the electricity, the gas, the water, everything else like normally you do. Now, additional barriers that place vulnerable aged people at risk, even unintended, is ageism. Ageism is defined as the systematic stereotyping of, an, of and discrimination of, against people because they are old. It works in the same way that skin color leads to, to racism. Ageism is prevalent and insidious and the most normalized of any prejudices. It is unlike any other forms of, of discrimination, such as sexism and racism, due to its normalization. It is rarely challenged, but it is insidious 
able to humanize all the people and diminish their dignity, their ability to defend themselves or claim their rights, and therefore having a direct impact on CDC. It is essential to be aware that ageism can unconsciously influence government attitudes and attitudes at all levels of the age healthcare system and affect the way decisions are made and operationalized. Consider the unintended consequences of the new reforms. New reforms of CDC carry potential for inequities between age groups, for example, access to the system, access to resources, access to quality and safe care, access to health care providers and professional health care workers, having consumer's choices truly upheld. I'm making some suggestions that I believe can mitigate against poor delivery of care services in all settings and at the same time help the aged healthcare work workforce as well. Thorough education about the aged healthcare sector's reforms, standards and guidelines at all levels of the workforce, including the boards of management, CEOs, managers in general. Develop a scale of vulnerability to be used in combination with current tools for assessing aged people and funded appropriately, rather than have categorized predetermined budgets for each package category, which they are at the moment. So I wonder how they assess their needs. This does not allow true choice to self by a person to make them. Develop, uh, develop a multiple access point system. That's e extremely important. One particular way of entering the system is absolutely exclusionary to most of us. I will go some, uh, some of the recommendations that I spoke about. I won't read all of them. National regulation of health professional workforce ratios providers to adhere to. That's extremely important. National registration of all categories of the workforce so they can be monitored. Mandatory publication of data regarding number of staff available per number of aged persons per shift. A aged persons, a carer is allocated to provide service in the community per shift and staff with relevant formal health education per shift. Establish clear risk management programs right through the system and clear mechanisms to mitigate against poor care delivery. Ensure resource and diverse means are available to enable access and effective communication. For example, in the computer, for example, if you go to my age care now, you want, everything is written. Why can't you put a verbal directions in it in different languages? So right away when you go in, you're blocked. If, you're, if you can't speak or write English, where would you go? Mandatory education, now what I'm suggesting is mandatory education. It shouldn't be a choice at all levels of the system. Values to be cultivated in aged care. These are compassion, competence, confidence, conscious, commitment, ageism and racism and sexism, cultural competence and cultural safety. We assume that people know what it is. You've got to educate people to understand it. And that includes boards of management, CEOs, governments. For example, concepts containing the, the new standards and guidelines of health, care, dignity, respect, personhood, relationships, and so on, cannot be simply assumed that would be practiced and by a majority of non-formally educated health workforce. These concepts are deeply embedded in culture and embodied by experience and influences a person's view of themselves and their position in society, as well as their expectations, attitudes, behavior, and is linked to a person's identity. Workforce conflict resolution, cross-cultural education, and mediation strategies for a multicultural workforce. That's another important issue. How do they communicate? What is conflicting? What kind of values they understand between themselves and practices? including inclusive clinical governance to monitor actual care and quality of care delivery at all levels of the organization and in the community. Who is going to monitor the people at home? Anyway, 
The adoption of CDC has shifted frail age healthcare delivery into a market-driven, consumerist, economic rationalized, competitive and technological context. While this shift has some advantages, nevertheless poses some challenges that could have a negative impact on and further disadvantage vulnerable age people in a multicultural and diverse society. For a minute, I'll ask you all to consider, I know it's very hard, consider that you are, think of being old, and on the top of that, an immigrant or refugee, a person who does not speak, read or write English well or at all, health and technologically literate, and in addition, black, LGBT, blind or deaf, cognitively impaired, suffering from a mental illness, have no income or private insurance, homeless, unable to access my aged care, and so on. How would you deal with that? Now think of what needs to be done to develop a truly inclusive, responsive, multicultural aged health care service. Uh, we heard about that with Lubitsa, I think. A good example. To me, it is obvious, however, that vulnerable age in a multicultural and multilingual society can suffer multiple difficulties and that they need significant help, not only to access the system, but to survive within it. It is my view, therefore, that the most important people in the chain of events in the new reforms, as they currently stand, till they change, under-resourced and with an unregulated workforce, are the carers, care coordinators and care managers, case managers. Therefore, it is imperative that, pro that providers, in order to moderate the negative effects of unlimited resource allocation and other barriers mentioned above, promote a culture of caring by cultivating values that mitigate against dehumanization. Using the values identified above to guide the development of, of organizational infrastructures policies and guidelines, and workforce attitudes, behaviors, and practices. A caring culture not only will help the delivery of good care, but will also support the well-being of the workforce. The values to be cultivated, as mentioned before, are compassion, competence, confidence, conscious commitment. Ultimately, through compassion, our humanity grows into fullness. Compassion connects us in a deep level to our common humanity and alerts us to our vulnerabilities and to our need for care. Competence as knowledge, judgment, skills, energy, experience, and motivation enable us to report, to respond adequately to the demands of one's professional responsibilities. Compassion, which is indispensable to the caring relationship, presupposes and operates from competence appropriate to the demands of human care. While competence without compassion can be brutal and inhumane, compassion without competence may be no more than meaningless, if not harmful intrusion into the life of a person or persons needing help. Confidence engendered by compassion, competence and conscience, a moral compass that directs consistent moral behavior that fosters trust in the relationship and commitment that becomes so internalized as a value that what I am obligated to do is not regarded as a burden. Rather, it is a call which draws us, draws me to a conscious willing and positive course of action. Now I'd like to add up something else. Human care as a moral ideal transcends and goes beyond the specific act of an individual or a health institution or a health professional. It is a collective act of the caring professions and institutions and services that have important consequences for human civilization. Thank you very much.